Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout 4, but maybe not quite the Fallout 4 you're expecting. Yes, I'm here with bacon, because there's something I've been meaning to look at in Fallout 4 for quite a long time, and just somehow, for some reason, today I had the hankering to finally, finally get round to it, and that is one bit of the game I just don't really ever see people talking about, or playing, or looking at, even though it's actually genuinely quite impressive. And that's the Pip-Boy, or rather one function of the Pip-Boy. Again, people just seem to totally ignore. And that is the games that come with the Pip-Boy. Because some of them are really rather good. A lot of effort actually went into this. So yeah, I got Red Menace from Vault 111. And I played it for a few seconds. Just thought, oh, that's Donkey Kong. That's really cool. It's a slightly adjusted Donkey Kong, but with a Fallout aesthetic. That's really nice. And then I never played it again because I wanted to get on with playing the actual game because I was really excited to play Fallout 4. So yeah, I never really went back to it. So yeah, let's just have a little look at some of these because some of them are genuinely very good because they're remakes of classic, classic games that have aged very well. So let us indeed start appropriate enough with Red Menace, as that is the first one that you find. This is indeed, well, not quite a straight remake of Donkey Kong, because almost none of the games in Fallout 4 are actually straight remakes. They're very, very flipping similar, but they've all been adjusted, not just enough to avoid copyright trouble, but actually the gameplay's been slightly adjusted too, which I quite like. Some of them have been just slightly jazzed up a little bit. So yes, indeed, of course. Very, very familiar, albeit with a... I don't even know what that's supposed to be. A communist spy or something? And it starts off... Ah! So if it's 25 metres, how high can you get? That strongly feels like the original Donkey Kong had four levels. You get up to 100 metres, and that was the final level when you finally defeated Donkey Kong. Pretty much by straight up murdering him. It was a bit of a dark turn in Mario's life that we don't talk about very much. But yes, how high can you get? Let's go! So, uh, let's see how accurate it is. Because, yeah, unlike in uh, the original Donkey Kong, which was entirely about uh, rolling barrels, plus, actually, some flames came up from the uh, the very bottom. There were some barrels in the but Oh, flip! Okay. So, they've kept one thing true from the original Donkey Kong, which is you needed to be really, really precise with your timings in the original Donkey Kong. Like, ludicrously precise. The jumps needed to be spot on. Uh, but also, in the original Donkey Kong, obviously he wasn't throw. You see? Look at that! You need to be exactly right! <laughs> the original Donkey Kong was really, uh, really bloody fiddly with that as well. Is there any way to actually get this up this, by the way? No, that is just, um, I've always wondered whether there was a way to do that, but no, there's no way to jump from the very top or anything. Right, 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 right. Oh, oh, oh dear, I'm about to... Okay, so basically I've just lost Donkey Kong three times in a row before getting past the second row, that's good for me. Okay, I can do this better. But yes, I'll admit, they've added something a bit interesting, which is, uh, yeah, he now actually throws the missiles at you as well as just rolling some missiles down at you. So one of them's probably going to go, no, if one of them doesn't go this way, that means I can just take this one and, oh, flip, flip, flip. Okay, we'll wait for that ad. Jump. You need to jump just a little bit earlier than you'd expect you need to. That was kind of the, uh, the trick to Donkey Kong and jump. Damn it! They also moved the location of the hammers, because it was originally hammers in Donkey Kong, but uh, it's not hammers here. Oh, this is a risk. This is- no, this is a stupid- no, 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 I am so bad at Donkey Kong, as it turns out. I used to be really good at Donkey Kong, not because I played the original, though I actually did. I had a Coleco Vision, which had the original Donkey Kong on it, but it was never my favourite game when I had that Coleco back when I was a kid. Uh, but no, what I was really more interested in was, uh, back in Donkey Kong 64, if you wanted to complete that game, you needed to actually... Am I just going to straight up... Oh, well that was easier. <laughs> this time he didn't roll a single barrel. Yeah, you kind of get lucky as to whether or not he's actually rolling barrels or throwing missiles, because the missiles are a bit easy to deal with. Now, is this going to be a straight rip-off of Donkey Kong Level 2? And it... Yes! Yes, it is. It actually is. So, uh, actually, this is fairly simple as long as you know how it works, which is basically you just need to avoid the things that are rolling along there. Let's just go along here and then up here. Now you just wait for the right moment because, yeah, the first level that I'm directly above at the moment, that changes direction, but this here, level two, doesn't. So there's not really much point going to grab the Brotherhood of Steel thing, to be honest. Instead, I just have to wait for the right moment to be on the ladder. Actually, if the ladder is descended... Is it actually possible for me to avoid the things on the... They're actually going... Also, what are those things? Because it was pies in the original Donkey Kong. Level 2, there was pies on a conveyor belt. I have no idea what those are supposed to be. But alright, fine. We're just going to go for a jump and... Go, 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 go. Yes, this is the right moment. This is the... Yes! Okay, right. I was about to be annoyed that he cheated by teleporting over to me. Now, the third level. This is the hardest in the original Donkey Kong. Let's see if it's the same. No! It's not! This is the original, was the original fourth level. So, this is actually not that bad at all. So, all you've got to do is basically go along here. And also, there's far fewer enemies than there were previously. Oh, no, he's adding more and more. Fine. 
Uh, so all we've got to do now is figure out what he's going to do. He's going along here. And now we've just got one more to get because they're kind of acting stupidly. Oh, well, they've made that remarkably simple. So now he is going to be crushed. That was the end of the original Donkey Kong because there were uh, there were four levels. That was the fourth level. And oh, well, what's this level then? Because they've just moved the fourth level into third place. Oh, they've just slightly... Is this exactly the same as the first level? Do I now just go on a loop? I might be just going on a loop right now. Let's see if it's exactly the same and duck. Apparently you can't duck. And now I'm dead. Well, regardless, I've got myself a high score. So it feels like for some reason, they took out the third level of the original Donkey Kong, but they left in all the others. I've no idea why, but that's nice. Donkey Kong is a classic. Now, that third level is an us nightmare. Maybe they took it out because no one on the dev team could actually complete it. I wouldn't blame them. There was, like, springs and jumpy things and really, really pixel-perfect jumps. Because if Mario basically just fell the slightest bit too much distance, it was an instant death. And if the platform was just a bit too high up when you were jumping from platform to platform because they were on a rotation, then you missed the jump and fell to your death. Basically, there was a lot of falling to your death. Also, I've only just learned this. If you're playing on PC with a controller, if you hold up with the analog stick, it goes at this speed through the miscellaneous tab. If you hold up on the D-pad, it goes at this speed. I have put literally weeks of my life into Fallout 4, and I did not know that till today. So, Atomic Command, basically the old classic missile command. I quite like this one. It's one of the better games. Like, um, the original Donkey Kong, and indeed it's a uh, rip-off Red Menace, is alright, but probably after you've played it for nostalgia's sake, you wouldn't play it again as a game, because, yeah, especially the, the slightly odd jumping, where you have to jump earlier than you think you feel like you ought to, doesn't quite work, but Atomic Command is a good, solid game. Basically, I'm going to be in a city, and I need to to shoot down missiles that are coming in. If you have to shoot ahead of them, you have to take them out with the explosion. If you can take out the planes as well, that's bonus points, and I'm about to lose various things. Oh, I'm about to lose, oh, I'm about to lose loads of things. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> okay, that's a really bad start. Basically, you get points for monuments that have survived and points for bombs you haven't fired. So being as efficient as possible gets you points. And as it says that every time you get 10,000 points, you get a monument back. When all the monuments are dead, that's game over. If you die, that's not game over, it just means you can't defend for the rest of that round. So it's actually a pretty solid game. It's just basically, yeah, shoot ahead, shoot ahead. Uh, if you want to kind of maximise your chances, then, oh dear, right, just go for that and that. And Oh, I completely missed one there. That's a shame. That's another one down. But I took out a plane for some bonus points, which is good. So you see there, I got slightly more bonus points for the bombs, but I've lost 100 bonus points because I've lost another monument there. So if you read D, right, that'll do for that. That'll do for that. That'll do for that. And that might take out that one as well. Yes, this'll do, this'll do, this'll do. And these do split off, which is kind of annoying. Right, just stop them, stop them, stop them. That one's just going to hit the ground. Oh! What took out that one? I don't know. Something took out that one, which I just totally flipping missed. But I got 300 bonus points because I used very few bombs. See, that's the thing. You can actually get a lot of bonus points for the bombs. Okay, now, keep going, keep going. Got to keep going here. And yeah, you see, if you actually aim at them, then you don't actually get anything, which is a shame. And you don't know which ones are and aren't about to split up into many, and I'm about to die. Oh, flip. That means if he... Oh, that was lucky. Okay. That plane did fire a cluster bomb, but fortunately, they didn't actually hit anything correctly, which is good. But as you can see there, because I'm dead, there's no spare bomb, so I get no bonus points towards. That's a low-scoring round. Okay, that's a bad start. That's a bad start. That's okay. One of you's going to just break up in a second. Like, if you need to, just basically set up a defensive thing of uh, things very close by to you. Take out that plane as well for some bonus points. Okay, that was a neat round at least. So 375 there and 600. As the levels go by and the number of bombs increases, obviously you get more and more points. So I just kind of want to get 10,000. So that will be fine for you. That'll be fine for you. That's a decent bomb there. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, don't worry about them because they're not going the right direction. Stop that and now go for the plane as well. Nice, take out the plane. A little bit of a bonus there, good. Actually, I think the plane's worth bonus points. I'm not sure. Maybe just fire the planes because then they don't fire more bombs. So that's fine. Obviously, it's a bit easier when you've got two that are very close by to you. Because once you've got two that are very close by to you, I think they speed up as well. I'm not 100% sure, but it feels like it. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Just, just go defensive. All defensive, all defensive. Ignore that. Take out the plane as well. And... Okay. We have survived long enough to hopefully get to 10,000. I mean, we'll get a monument bank in a second. Yay! There it is. Right. Take you out. Take you out. Take you out. Take you out. Take you out better. Uh, I don't think you can actually blow up your own monuments, which is good. But now, obviously, now I've got more monuments. It's actually getting more... Oh, I'm about to lose the monument I just got back. And also myself. And luckily, those final few miss. Okay. 
So I've lost the monument I just spent ages getting back. But, fortunately, my two remaining monuments are now worth more and more. That would have been 1,200 had I kept more monuments. Yeah, two monuments right next to you is not a bad state of affairs. Because then you can basically just fire, like, a huge number of bombs really close by to you. And create, like, a... When I say create a big shield, apparently I failed to do Operation Shield. No, 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 don't take that one. Oh, flipping out. Also, you're trying to do more. And they're getting faster. Right, I'm down to just the giant president's heads. That is not good. Protect the giant president's heads at all costs. Because now they're all going to start splitting off. And it's going to be very, very bad. And any minute, any of these will start becoming multiple warheads. Go, go. No, 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 no. Don't let him. Okay, good. Screw you, plane. Just got to get to... Oh, flip. Okay, we're getting very little now. I think it's actually capping out at 500. Oh, that was good. I just did a bunch of damage there. Oh, but they're trying to come in. They're probably going to come in. You're... Probably going to split off in a second, take you out, and save for now. In which case, don't fire at once, I'm going to hit anything, because look at that. I've saved so many bombs there that I actually get a 1,000 points just from the bombs. Okay, good, it hasn't capped out at 500, it's like at 600 now. So actually picking the right ones to bother targeting is a... Oh dear, no, 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 ouch, oh no, that means if this dies, it's game over. That is a shame. It's a really good game. The original Missile Command was a good game. Atomic Command is, which they've basically changed nothing as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure like what the old kind of score thresholds were or exactly whether they've changed exactly how you get more bonus monuments or anything. But uh, yeah, it's a genuinely really solid game. I enjoy Atomic Command an awful, awful lot. On to Pitfall. This is probably my least favourite. Based on Pitfall... I just don't think this one works particularly well, but then I never really enjoyed the original Pitfall either. I just don't really get the point of it. Basically, all I need to do is collect five bobbleheads before time runs out, so 300 seconds. Basically, you run along the top, there's some generic dangers which are not desperately interesting, so, you know, there's a frag mine there. Just jump. When I said jump over that, I just ran into that, so, you know, some things stay the same. Uh, we've also got, you know, like, you know, uh, these guys dropping logs. Then you just jump over there. Basically, almost every screen is, hey, there's a thing in the middle of the screen. You should probably, and also occasionally you'll just swing just to avoid these things. Just basically swing over a rope over a thing. You'll also notice, obviously, there's a vault downstairs. The vault downstairs is basically there to act as fast travel. Because you can skip between, like, the different ladders under the ground nice and safely. So if you've made it to an area, you can skip by. The problem is, because everything looked the same, like, this is basically identical to an area I passed earlier. I've not actually kind of got... On loop. This isn't just like a repeat of earlier. This is just the fact that everything looks really similar. Now avoid the radiation. Wait for that to go away. And as soon as that goes away, just go and grab myself. Pip boy thing number one. These guys basically you can jump on them as long as their claws aren't up. So you can just cross that one that way. Now there's more radiation. But yeah, there's just a really, really limited low number of hazards. Uh, which means I just don't find it that interesting, to be honest. There's number two. I'm also not very good at this game, so I can skip down here if I want to. So just jump and jump, and there's not a third log this time. Fine. There's probably another one more this way, but oh, flip and jump and jump. Lovely. So just keep going this way, and we'll find probably... Yes, indeed. That's the same screen pretty much for the third time, but this time I've got to avoid the radiation at the same time. Just go through there. And sometimes you can just be just basically trolled by logs that just shot when you can't really do anything about them. So that's kind of annoying. Like if a log happens to appear at the very end of the screen. Avoid you. Through here. And now, yeah, you can see it's just the, the same again. This isn't, this is why I, ouch, oh, don't, don't, don't drop again. Though apparently I've got some health back. Don't know where from. Maybe you get some health back from picking up the, the statues. I'm genuinely not sure. Through here, statue number three. But this is broadly it. You can see it's a very repetitive game, which is, yeah, probably its biggest weakness. It's just, ouch, I dropped off at the wrong time there. So five very, very similar screens later, I found the fourth one. Yes, indeed, that gets me a bit of health back. But uh, now I just basically keep going and getting trolled by a log right at the end there. That's the annoying thing about this game, when you can get very much trolled by a log in a way that kind of feels very unfair, quite frankly. And here we are, 90 seconds left. Just got to avoid this guy. I don't even know what that is that produces the radiation. But there we are. I've got the fifth thing. I win! Yay! And I get some bonus for my health and bonus for time. 
and then basically you just play again. There's not like a second level, that's literally it. So yeah, it's probably the weakest of all of them. Also, I don't think there's like a finite number in any one direction. If you want to, you can just go left at the beginning instead, which I know feels slightly odd. But the thing is, going left is actually a really stupid idea, because even if you're going left, the crabs raise their pincers as if you were going right. So actually, like, you know, if you're going from left to right, then the crab pincers come up and down in a way that lets you kind of hop along. But if you're going from right to left, it, it doesn't, and then you kind of need to use the rope. And if there isn't a rope, then you're just kind of screwed, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, let's ignore that one and move on to another classic at the very bottom here. Zeta Invaders, based, of course, on Asteroid. No, it's not. It's based on Space Invaders. This is, of course, incredibly similar to the original Space Invaders, albeit they've made some slight changes, some very, very minor changes uh, related to... They've actually added a bit of an interesting complication to it, which is occasionally um, cows get abducted. Oh, that's an unfortunate miss right there. Uh, yeah, cows get abducted, and you lose points if the cow is successfully abducted. Hopefully we'll get to see that during this game. Uh, kind of one of the tricks of Space Invaders, of course, is you can't fire until your bullets made contact, so you really don't want to be focusing on the rear ranks when they're still front ranked because you get more dps oh there it is so now if i can take out that one right now before the cow gets abducted and sadly i couldn't because yeah there was a shot defending it but i avenged it i avenged the cow by destroying the ship it's presumably still on so that probably didn't help the cow very much yeah you always want to be firing at the nearest ranks first because it will just oops never mind it will straight up improve your dps and also stay very close by to the barns because the barns oh that's extra bonus points up there there we go nail those extra bonus points i used to be pretty good at Space Invaders, but I'm probably lost it now. The trickiest bit, as anyone who's played Space Invaders before will know, is actually the very last flipping ship. Because the very last ship is where the game starts basically straight up trolling you. Because things will just get faster and faster. And like, it seems like it's still manageable at the moment, but uh, just be very careful. Because those are, yeah, right there. That's just the level of trolling this does. Uh, finishing off that last row is, oh, I would love to try and save you, but it's not going to work out for you. Sorry, cow. Okay, right. Just wait here for this line to come up, because then we can probably take these guys as they come, which is, oh, careful. Right, take revenge, revenge on you, revenge on you, and then one more. Obviously, you know, you can see they're firing a lot faster now, but now we can, for the most part, oh, that was complete luck. That was complete luck I took you out, so now just go for you. The moment this next one dies, this is going to go crazy because this happens. And he still fires, but basically you've just got to, you've just got to nail your timings. And no, 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 damn it. Come on, one more. Damn, come on. And damn, no. Damn, yes. That was a yes, actually. I always hate getting that last one. It's very difficult to do. Oh, that's just, that's just cheating. Also, of course, when you go up to the next level, you don't regain your barns, which is, oh, game over. Yeah, this is, it's a very tricky little game, Space Invaders, or rather, it's not actually that difficult, it just requires, like, some really, really good timing. But, uh, yeah, you really just want to be uh, focusing on, like, the rows. Normally, I would take, like, two rows at a timeout. If you take two rows at a timeout, then you're probably pretty safe. You also want to be taking these guys out. Like, I'm not sure if there's a good tactic. I've never been sure about this. Whether there's a good tactic to stop the barns being destroyed. So obviously, you can destroy the barns from within, but it's the last thing you want to do. I mean, you can do, because it provides you with, like, a safe space to shoot through. Because now I can shoot through here. Unless they shoot at the exact right angle, there's basically no way they're going to be able to do anything to me. Oh, oh, come on. Can we can we take this guy out? But And when I say the exact right angle, that guy just shot at the exact right angle because he's a dick. So, you know, it didn't help that much. You were better off, like, not taking out the barns. Oh, flip. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ow! Darn you, yeah. I've really lost my knack for this. I used to be all right at it. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there was any good tactic for stopping the barns being destroyed. I don't really think there was, to be honest. I think the barns just got destroyed. So by the time you kind of cleared out the first round, you had very little cover to work with. But really, it was more about strafing into it, but sometimes you would just get screwed over like right there, where if there just happens to be two bolts next to each other, unless you've got lightning fast reflexes, you would just kind of screw. But Space Invaders, still an utter, utter classic. And then for the game everyone forgets, even in the mode everyone forgets, because only one of the DLC packs for Fallout 4 adds a new Pip-Boy game, and it was indeed Automatron. Automatron gave us a new game, called Automatron, you know, appropriately enough, and it was actually probably 
I probably don't like it as much as I like Atomic Command, but it was still pretty darn good. This was closely based on Robotron uh, 2084, which I never had as a kid, but I am familiar with. So basically, it's just, well, if you're on controller, it's a twin-stick shooter, basically. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of enemies, humans that need to be rescued as well for bonus points, mines that you can detonate in order to actually clear out a bunch of people. Basically, this is just a massive cluster flip of a game. It's a great little game, by the way. So you start in the center, and for the most part, what you do is you just figure out which corner is the right direction to go into, and then you just start clearing people out. If uh, humans get touched by enemies, then they will die. So for the most part, what you actually wanted to do is you could also trigger the mines there. So triggering a, m a conveniently placed mine was a good idea. Once you had very few enemies left, and the basic gutsies for the moment aren't even shooting, just, oh, I just accidentally completed the level. Sentry bots have also been added in, you may notice. Uh, sentry bots uh, basically can't be killed and aren't even considered one of the enemies. They don't shoot at you either, so just take that out. That's probably safe. There we go. Yes, yeah, sentry bots for the most part just... Oh, the sentry bots can kill people, however. Sentry bots can kill people, so you need to get to people relatively quickly. Oh, this is where things get a bit more interesting, because then you, you get boxed in really, really bloody fast. Okay, so this is more an obvious one. So now I'm just going down to the... When I say that's an obvious one, I went in the wrong direction, yes. Uh, so just clear out that mine, clear out you. Sentry bots will- oh, and now they're shooting at me. That was entirely game over there. So basically I just did terribly, because uh, the moment the game got in any way complicated, I started failing miserably. But yeah, just kind of, there's some really fun stuff. It's a very rapid paced, good little game. Sentry bots can't be killed, but they can be pushed around by your bullets, which is kind of fun. Probably go over here at this point. And no, don't run that way, human! You've made a really stupid decision, human! Right, clear out those guys. So apparently the human is fine. I'm not sure how the human is fine. The human is just fine. Right, go for human. And yeah, right now, there aren't any projectiles being thrown at you, but projectiles get thrown in. Mines become more common. The kind of the enemy hordes become much, much bigger. It just becomes much more of an insane game. Also, yeah, the sentry bots just cause massive amounts of trouble. Now, just destroy those guys. And now, for the most part, I can just hang out in the corner. In these early rounds, basically just pick a corner and just hang out in the corner, and it's not so bad. Uh, probably I'm going to go up to the left. Oh, I don't know. Completely messed up. Okay, this time I'm definitely going up to the right. That's fine. So now just clear out these guys. So now they're going to start shooting at you. I'm pretty sure, however, bullets can be shot down, which is quite nice. Um, can mines destroy sentry bots? Apparently not. Although, oh, oh, flipping hang. Right, get humans. Get, no, 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 you are a trap human because you're firing at me. So yeah, there's some humans that are, are fake human traps. You can tell the difference because the humans you want to collect are the ones that are running, whereas the humans that are just kind of walking around are obviously synth infiltrators and need to be taken out or something. Boom, lovely. So this is a, oh, flip, right. And I immediately died that one. Uh, yeah, it's obviously, you know, it's a bit of a, a bit of a lucky thing as to whether you get lucky or not. Right, oh, that sentry bot's blocking me that way. And then just take you out. And then the sentry bot sent... No! Flip sentry bots. Sentry bots don't seem to hunt you, which is quite nice. Uh, right, just clear out that mine, please. Thank you. Now go for some humans for some bonus points. One human got eaten up there. You can tell from the skull and crossbones. And then clear out the last of them. It's just a very fun, fast-paced little game. I do enjoy it. It's probably my... Is it my favourite? It might be my... It's one of my favourites anyway. Oh, that's a... No, that's a fake one. Oh, now I'm trapped in a corner. Now I'm trapped in a... And I've lost the game. Actually, no, I think I gained an extra one from somewhere. And then just through here. Detonate that mine to clear myself out a bit of space. Good. Oh, I think I did actually just genuinely destroy a, uh, a sentry bot there. And you are over there. And this isn't so bad. Yeah, you can shoot down the projectiles. Actually, I think you can shoot down the big projectiles. I'm not sure if you can shoot down the little stars. The big projectiles actually home and come after you. So they are genuinely very, very dangerous. You need to go down, my good man. And let's go away. There we go. We go down there. And we've got ourselves a robot brain. Lovely. Still kind of screwed here, by the way. And yeah, if you don't kind of find the right way to dive straight away, you're kind of screwed. So in there, we've got a couple of games that are fun for the nostalgia factor that you probably don't want to do more than dip your toe into them, in particular Red, Menace, and Zeta Invaders. But you've also got two games I think are genuinely very fun and hold up very nicely in the form of Atomic Command and Automatron. In fact, I'm going to give you Atomic Command another go. The fun thing about Atomic Command, by the way, is like it goes wrong almost immediately because when you're initially defending, if a single bomb hits the ground, it will destroy something. It gets easier as things go along. You have less to defend. 
So, okay, you you, know, you just need to go over there. You need to come over here. Now, take out that plane before it drops anything else on me. Those go down. See that? That's the first round you actually need to do. Take out those planes first. 275 for being efficient. 800 points for the, uh, the monuments. So, yeah, the game kind of balances itself really interestingly, which I find fascinating. So, like, if you've got loads of monuments and thus you're doing well, you get loads of points and thus kind of well set up to get bonus monuments. However, if you've lost loads of monuments, you may get less points, so you're in a worse situation, but what you've got left is easier to defend, so the balance kind of regulates itself, which is kind of cool. So next up, we've got ourselves. Yep, you go down, take you down as well. That was a bad shot because that was too far forward. Right, take out the plane if you have the opportunity to. You are going to go down as well. You're going to go down as well. And that did not... Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. I'm going to lose one. I'm going to lose one of myself, so I don't get the bonus points for myself for that round. But it was only the final bomb, so I still get the 700 off there. And there's no consequences to you dying. You don't matter, apparently, is what the game is saying. Right, that was a bad shot right there. That was, this was a, this was a bad shot. I need to take out the plane if I can, and then all of you go down. Yep, that was good. That there was a good round. You see this? This is how you play Atomic Slash Missile Command right there. So, you... And then you, that was probably bad. This will take out most of you. This will take out most of you as well. And I need to take out you and you lot. And then you lot. And then take you out. Lovely. And then just take out the plane if you can. And then screw you missiles. Nice. Sorry, these are technically nukes. Because this is atomic command, not missile command. So all of these missiles are atomic. That's the important thing to realise. See, I've got a much better score going on here already. So I think that one was about to split up. So I pick the right target there and now things start getting a bit more interesting and also life gets a bit more difficult because I'm using a flipping control and no New Vegas New Vegas just and more's gonna go down yet oh I lost what did I lose there I think I lost two that time so I'm down to yeah five monuments right this is where yeah things start getting a bit more interesting because at this point if you've still got all your monuments it's all gonna go to hell at this point so no go for you Go for you. That will take out you as well, but not you. Uh, clusters of missiles are the most dangerous of all. No, go, 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 go. Oh, flip Mount Rushmore. No. Also, everything over there. No, no, no. Don't take out. Okay. I think I just saved the Space Needle. Don't worry, Seattle. You s is that the Space Needle? I think that's the Space Needle. I like Seattle. Good city. Actually, oh, and I've got New Vegas back. That's good because I'm still getting a good amount of points. You're having like four or five is probably actually a pretty good balance because four or five is worth like, oh, flip. Everything's gone to hell. Uh, right, take out you, take out you, take out you. Oh, I think I just did a really good job there. Take out that plane as well. Oh, the lucky plane got away. Yes, that there was a good job of atomic command. So we've got, yep, there we go. Right, that's splitting into parts already. That will take out all of you. That won't take out any of you. Okay, just fire defensive, fire defensively. Oh, I've died and that means everything speeds up and... Oh, that that's where it all went wrong. That's... Wait, what is that? I would have guessed that was the Capitol building, but it's got a big halo over it. I don't know what that means. Okay, so now things are going to get interesting. When I say get interesting, I mean things have now got so fast, I can't defend it anymore. Right, no, 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 no. To defend the Capitol, the flipping Chinese are still bombing everything, and I've just lost the game. Well, you know what? That's canonically accurate. America has to be bombed, otherwise Fallout can't happen. In fact, actually, I just did worse than I did in the round that I said I did terribly in. So that's how fast this game can go wrong. So all of that's fine and good, and I do generally believe Automatron's actually a pretty damn solid game. And Atomic Command's a really, really fun game. All of this pales into insignificance, though, next to the game that, again, I don't see people talking about, and I don't know why, because this one's almost slightly incredible. Because all the games we've seen so far have basically been pretty much straight-up takeoffs of very simple, fairly repetitive games with not much to them. Not Grognak and the Ruby Ruins, though. This is an old-school RPG text adventure that's basically a full game. A full game by the old standards, though. It's not very long, but... It's like, you know, it's not just like one screen repeating like Pipfall or Space Invaders. There's an actual full flipping game in here. You find yourself in a worn but well-kept tavern filled with all manner of folk. It's time to recruit some help in your quest to stop Greelock. Whoever Greelock is, we need to stop him. So I start off with Grognet myself, of course. I have 60 hit points and 10 focus. I don't know what my initiative score is, by the way. Everyone else, you can actually see, like, what their different scores are and stuff. So if I go to Mauler over here, you dare patronise me. Well, you know full well who I am. Mauler, War Maiden of Mars. I'll draw enemy attacks and help you against Greelock. 
Greedog, but this doesn't make us friends. So she's got a decent amount of hit points. Tells you how much damage she does. Her focus level. Focus is basically like her mana pool, if you like, for performing special attacks. And her initiative, which determines turn order. Though interestingly, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to see what Grognag's initiative is. You can figure out what his attack is because just by doing some attacking. But like, there's no real way of knowing what his initiative is. It seems to be like about 10. I've played this like once. I've done it very well. But like, I'm a bit more familiar with some of the old school text adventures, which is why I can kind of vaguely guess what's going on here. So she seems like, you know, she's all right. She'll be a decent tank. She's got a good amount of health. She can draw enemy attacks. Fine. So she'll be a good little shield maiden. So don't bring along her just the second. Let's look at the others first. We've also got Bloppo. A quest, you say, with treasure. I'm your man as long as the gold keeps flowing. In return, I'll make sure enemies are wide open to attacks. Grognak is, as you would expect, a barbarian. He's pretty tough and he hits pretty hard. So having support characters with you can be quite useful. So this guy can do a decent amount of damage. He's got very high initiative, decent amount of focus, and uh, but not much hit points. So he could be potentially a little bit... Yeah, he could be a bit fragile. Let's leave him for now. Then we have got Swift, like I have a choice, mother said to get off my behind and quest, so quest I must, and at least my elven salve will protect us from harm. So she's got a decent amount of hit points, plenty of focus, can do a decent amount of damage, not particularly high initiative, so she's quite slow, but looks like she'll be able to do some form of shield for the team, is I'm guessing what she's saying there with her elven salves, her special ability. And finally, Zaxter, the powers of the cosmos are at my command. This Greelock, complete fraud, parlor tricks and mirrors. So to keep things challenging, I'll limit myself to putting enemies to sleep. So obviously we've got a bit of a supporting mage here. Not much health, but tons of focus. Decent-ish initiative, but not great, and obviously can't really attack. So he can inflict status conditions. Sleep is really, really good, because sleep is well. One, if you need some time to get your health back, sleep can be very, very powerful. And while enemies are asleep, they take loads of bonus damage. I will bring Zaxter along. Sure, he seems pretty bloody good. Which means probably we should go for someone a little bit on the tougher side. Mauler will probably do quite nicely. Plenty of health. Decent amount of focus, good initiative, can just get up front and block for us. Lovely. And there we are, we have got a full party. Now we adventure forth and stop Greelock. And now we are genuinely actually playing like an old school RPG thing with like a full map. And all of these little areas we're seeing here are actually little places we can visit. Some of them have got friends, some of them don't. So just head into the southern docks here. These empty docks should be a hub of commerce, but Greedox evil campaign forces merchants and sailors to stay indoors. So we just leave again. We might need those later. And this is just one map. I think there's more than one map because like when I was just testing this out at one point, then uh, yeah, I ran into someone who specifically said, hey, you know, if you do this thing for me, I'll take you elsewhere in the level. So all of these are just like little areas we can visit. There's big monsters that you want to be avoiding. That thing over there is, I'm guessing, a Cerberus type monster. Let's just keep our distance from him because right now we are very kind of crappy and basic. You don't level up, there's no XP, but you do gather equipment that improves your stats. Also, this is a really, really flipping hardcore game, by the way. I don't know why you can't go further south, by the way. It's just, you know, limitations to how far you can go unless you kind of find like a boat or a bridge or whatever to take you further. But uh, this is a really, really, really flipping hardcore game. Which is, you know in Fallout 4, you've got your companions and like if they run out of health during a fight, they basically just go down onto the ground and kind of, you know, wait for you to finish the fight. And then once the fight's done, they get back up and regenerate all their health. No, doesn't happen here. And if you die, there's no way to get back up again if you're a companion other than being brought here to the Chapel of Resurrection where you have to pay to have your people brought back from the dead. Focus, effectively your mana for doing abilities also doesn't come back when you're in the overworld. So if you've drained all your mana using abilities, then basically you buy items to top that up, otherwise you're just pretty screwed when the next battle rolls around. It's a brutal, brutal little game. Right, let's find something that doesn't sound too bad. Outcast Refuge. Yeah, let's nip inside here. So, you face one orc, a goblin shaman, and a shaggy man-beast. Okay, fine. So, round one, we've got to take out the orc first, and then we know what's coming up next. 
a Goblin Shaman and a Shaggy Man Beast. So Mauler's up first because she's got high initiative. She can just attack. She can meditate, which increases her focus, thereby allowing her to use abilities like the Aegis Stance. Or she can recover to get some health back. So she moves into her stance and attacks. So she gets an attack in and she is an easy but well protected target. Meaning the enemy is more likely to attack her now. But she's also got her defences up. So that works pretty nicely. Grognak can attack as well. His special ability is Furious Rage. Which basically just means he attacks three times in a row more and more. It's very, very good. It's basically going to be the highest damage dealing thing you've got. He can meditate to get his focus up or recover as well. Grognak, interestingly, has very little focus, so it's worth kind of saving it for emergencies, and if you can boost focus with items, doing that. So let's just do a normal attack with Grognak. So that does 9 damage. That's probably the lower end of his damage range. And now it's Zaxter's go. Zaxter can do his sleep spell for, I believe, 10 focus it costs him to do that. So is that worth doing right now? Yeah, probably. As meditating his points and he can't recover, we may as well put this guy to sleep. So Zaxter draws a symbol of Sazir the Sand Lord as he casts a powerful spell. And the orc is now sleeping. The orc is still sleeping, meaning he doesn't get an attack this turn. The orc is still sleeping. Grognak can just do a basic attack at this point. And now we can see here. Ah, you can also see if you use focus in a turn, then focus comes back at one point per round, but doesn't come back at all in the overworld, which is amazing. Unless, of course, you spend gold to buy items. So just do an attack with Grognak now. So Grognak would have done 17 damage, but because he's sleeping, it does 17 more damage. It's not always a straight up double, but it seems to be about a double or so. In comes a cackling goblin saw. Lovely. Round three, and whose go is it? It's Mauler. She has lost a fair amount of her focus. This guy doesn't seem that tough. I'm just going to hit him with basic attacks. I don't want to burn her focus too much. So the goblin attacks the party with a caustic hex, which means Grognak for 11, Zaxter for 11, and Mauler for 10. So yeah, they've also got special abilities, and their special abilities very often hit everyone in the party, which can be quite dangerous. Grognak can just do another attack, I'd say. That's fine. He's down to 9 health. Zaxter should probably recover. When you recover, you get health back, but you also step back to recover. So the chance of the enemy attacking you at that point is lowered, but not kind of certain. So as a result of that, you can sometimes get screwed over by the random number gods a little bit. So I'm just going to recover. And you can see you only kind of get like 7, 8 hit points back per recover, which can be a little bit tricky. If Mauler attacks at this point... She'll probably finish him off if we're lucky. Yes, indeed, 10 damage. He goes down. But now we need to take out what's presumably like the little boss of this area. The Shaggy Man Beast. Yes, indeed. Who's up first? It is Zaxter. Well, that just works perfectly for me because that means I can sleep spell this guy straight away, which is probably a good idea. I've never seen the sleep spell fail, by the way. I think it's actually pretty darn good. Mauler's up next. 14 focus on her. I don't even want to waste more focus on her because now if I attack right now, this should do... Oh yeah, look at that. Hits him for 13, but because he was sleeping, he takes 15 additional damage. But now he wakes up because he's been attacked and does 22 damage to Mauler. Ouch. Luckily, been reduced to 11 because even though she did the stance earlier in the battle, it still applies now and all enemies are more likely to attack her, which is good. So at this point, probably it's a good idea to do Furious Rage, so that uses up six of his focus points. So Grognak rages forth and hits three times in a row for 14 damage, then for 12 damage. Oh, I thought it always went up, but apparently not. For 11 damage, it seems to be just uh, three attacks in a row. I thought it kind of went up as his rage went up, but clearly I'm just thinking of Pokemon. So I've won the battle, and everyone's in pretty good shape in terms of like the amount of focus. What are we going to get? 20 gold and the Lost Ring of Brutality damage plus two. Who do we give that to? I'd say probably Grognak. The thing is, Grognak with his special ability gets to attack three times. So if I give that to, say, Mauler, that's effectively plus two damage per attack. But Grognak, if I give that to him and then he does a special ability, that's plus six damage because it's plus two times three. So give that to Grognak. I'd say you basically give all the damage boosting items to Grognak just because his rage thing is so damn powerful. So we leave now and we've got money, which lets us buy stuff from the shops. Because there's shops around too. Because there's a proper little economy, there's sub-bosses, there's actual quests. Like you'll find areas where someone says, hey, I need you to go and do something else for me or whatever. So watch this over here. This is the Conjurer's Tower. I think you've got a quest for me, don't you? The aroma of incense is unmistakable as you step into the tower. An elderly elven man in kaleidoscopic robes meets you with a friendly and knowing smile. Good use of the word kaleidoscopic, but I don't get to say that enough. I can help you reach Greelock, man, but I need the Dawnlight Locket and the Tomb of the Dusk Hound to work my mojo. You'll find them up north, but Manticore's bridge is up, so maybe check out the docks. Fine, so he's basically saying I need to cross a river 
up here. But I think right now there's no way to actually cross the river. That's just a little shrine there. There's probably just some monsters in there. And I think there's a... There's a bridge round here or something. And here's... Ah, here's a shop. Now you can see there she's selling the focus seeds for party focus plus 10 for 15 gold. So, like, you know, if you've burnt through your focus by doing, like, spamming powerful abilities against, like, a sub-boss, then coming here and buying some focus seeds is a good idea. But other than that, it's like, you know, Orc Forged Maul for damage plus 2, Circuit of Protection for max hit points plus 4. That's pretty darn good. I'll leave that for now. I don't feel like we've really got enough kind of gold to justify that. And the thing about this game is it's actually surprisingly long as well. So we were told by the wizard to go and speak to the ship about finding a way around the fact that that bridge is down. Unfortunately, that ship's going to send me on a different subquest to a different part of the map and I need to take out a boss there. And obviously you need to be taking out as many of the little kind of goblin and orc villages as you can, purely for the sake of getting the money together to buy all of the goods from the shops because you want to be clearing out the shop in order to get things as strong as possible. It is a small but still full little game that genuinely takes a little bit of time to actually play through properly in order to properly kind of get your character up and all sorts of bits and pieces. There's even a tiny bit of snowy plane here which is lovely. So I would say, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, the second part of our little Pip-Boy game special is going to be dedicated exclusively to Grognak and the Ruby Ruins, because Grognak and the Ruby Ruins is genuinely a really solid flipping game with some surprisingly tough little enemies in it. In fact, if I just head up here into this area, yes, I believe you, I ran into you before. Hello there. This great serpent has 400 flipping hit points, and he hits like a flipping brick. He has enough initiative to attack me first, and he just hit Mauler for 34 damage, meaning she's almost flipping dead. So Grognak can just kind of go in with his furious rage and whatever, and it, oh, he doesn't even have the focus for that. Oh, I haven't planned this well. Grognak, flee, Grognak, flee! And Grognak attempts to flee, but sadly can't disengage. I assume that's a function of initiative, in which case if anyone can flee, it's going to be Mauler. No, she can't disengage either. Basically, we're utterly, utterly doomed. Just, just kind of, you know, put him to sleep and hope, Zack Star. And even when he's asleep, all I can do is 11 damage boosted by a further 17, but that's going to wake him up automatically, meaning, yes, as you can see there, this isn't going particularly well. And I can try and just kind of juggle him in sleep, but I'm going to run out of focus very, very quickly. So I'm now out of focus and I won't be able to put him to sleep a second time, so that's unfortunate. But this time, hopefully, still asleep. Come on, Grognak. Yeah, this time Grognak gets attack, and sadly, not quite ready for Furious Rage yet, but... 17 damage, but a further 29 on top. This is good. We still haven't got a quarter of his flipping health down, and now we actually physically can't put him to sleep anymore. So, yeah, this isn't going well. And now the Great Serpent actually gets to attack, and he's doing Grand Constriction. 40 damage to Grognak, 37 to Zaxstar, who's now fallen, and 40 to Mauler, who's also fallen. Yeah, his group ability just took out two of my team immediately. Furious Rage him, go on, be angry at him, because he just killed most of your entire team. Strike furiously for 20 damage, for another 20 damage, and then go on, hit him with a big one. No, down to 18. Well, that's underwhelming. And the Great Serpent hits Grognak, and Grognak is dead as well. And so ends the game, because the sub-bosses in this area are actually surprisingly bloody tough. Though generously, and this is far too generous for an RPG text adventure, the game does actually suggest, would you like to restart just before this battle, and thus bring you back in a situation where if you want to, you can then run away as if you hadn't fought that battle in the first place, which is far too generous for text adventures of the era it's trying to emulate here. But whatever, it is still quite welcome. So, Grognak and the Ruby Ruins, the full playthrough coming up later this week, ladies and gentlemen, because genuinely, there is a fantastic, really hardcore, old school text adventure buried in Fallout 4 that I never see anyone acknowledge in any way, which is a real shame. But in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been the surprisingly excellent Grognak and the Ruby Ruins in and amongst the surprisingly excellent Pip-Boy games in general. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ignore the demon we just summoned, it can't fit over the bridge. Okay, yeah. it can fit over the bridge. Oh, look at that. Your pantaloons are very, very nice. Okay, I've got a good idea. I'm going to summon a second demon to fight this one. Oh, look at the lightning. I got quite drunk last night and I don't know where my Death Star is.